Good morning, church. Welcome to Gold Coast Central, whether you're watching online or here in person. My name's Rochelle, if you haven't met me before. You'll remember that we're doing a series in our sermons at the moment on the five love languages. Today we're going to be talking about quality time. When I think about quality time, I go way back in my memory to my mum, to the many hours she used to spend reading to me as a child and for years after that actually. I think about my dad tells me, and I actually didn't remember this until he uh, reminded me a couple of years ago, that she used to sit with me in my first year of school at the bus stop because we lived on this tiny little island a mile wide and a mile long and I used to catch the bus to school and she used to sit there and read to me. She was determined we'd be good readers and she spent the time but we also gathered from that her love for us. Then when a number of years, many years after that, my mum became terminally ill Guess what? She wanted us to read to her and some of the same stories, the Jungle Doctor books that she used to read to us. I wonder what comes to your mind when you think about quality time this morning. We hope you enjoy the program that's been put together for you today and we look forward to worshipping with you. Thanks, Rochelle. All right, why don't we stand together? We're going to start spending some quality time with our Heavenly Father this morning. We've got a whole hour that we're planning to spend praising and worshipping Him. So why don't you stand with us? We're going to talk about the battle belonging to Him and He's got us during this time. Yeah. 
shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win. in Jesus. Everyone's got that friend that they really want to be with, yeah? And I feel like that Jesus is that one friend that you know is always going to be there whenever you want him to be there, whenever you need him to be there. What a friend we have in Jesus. That's what we're going to sing about now. Oh my gosh, let's try again, shall we? Let's have an intro. Let's go, Jaden. <laughs> As you know, we are building a new structure to the left of me or to the right of, right of you uh, for our kids. And uh, a few weeks ago, our business meeting uh, voted on that. And so we have now paid our deposit. Woohoo! Woo! And uh, Norm says that we will be breaking ground in about a month or so. So we are now fully moving forward for that and we are really looking forward to what God is going to do in that complex. So, Charles, what's happening tonight? Well, tonight is a big night and it is a night of celebration. We have been planning this for some time. Um, 
behind the scenes. Thank you so much, Julie, for all that you've done. But um, we have a great night of music today, and um, we will be having our concert. Yes. Um, Bringing Hope Alive is the title, is the theme that we have put together, and it's the hope that we're trying to be, bring to those that have lost, that are less fortunate than us from New South Wales and Queensland in terms of being affected by the floods. So uh, what kind of artists, is this like a Gold Coast Got Talent type of uh, concert or is it more, a, is it something else? Well, it is more than a Gold Coast Has Got Talent, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> Let me share some special news. We actually have um, uh, a contestant from The Voice who actually was one of the finalists there. So he will be singing tonight and, um, uh, and we have so many artists, not from our church, but also within our church, and it will be a jam-packed night, I would say. Please come along, because yep. it is a, it's going to be a high night. Yep. It's going to be a fabulous so night. So these are awesome singers, uh, and we've got a group coming, um, lots of different soloists, uh, some of our amazing uh, local talent, and also, obviously, people. So if you have a passion for music... Um, and or you just love listening to it as well, I just highly encourage you to come along tonight. It is going to be, I think, something to remember and you will never forget tonight. So I just want to encourage that. Yes, so we're opening at 5.45. The doors will be open and we'll have the cafe open then and there will be uh, drinks and uh, snacks and pastries that are available for you to have and buy as contribution towards the, uh, the concert. And as part of that, please, remember the time starts at 6.30, so make sure you're in, seated, and we'll be ready to go, and it will be amazing. Trust me, and um, you won't be let down. <laughs> uh, entry is free, by the way, so please come along. Encourage your neighbours and your friends to come along. Thanks, Charles and Julie. That was great. Now, Michael, I'm going to invite you up here. We don't have to sit too far apart, which is good. <laughs> okay. Um, for those of you who are still wondering what Pastor Matt actually does, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking after life groups in the church. Now, for those of you who have been in the church for a while, you probably already have some understanding of what life groups means. For those who haven't been here for very long, um, life groups are effectively groups that we set up uh, for people to be a part of. Our life groups effectively um, create atmospheres and environments for, for people to be able to connect with, with, uh, with other people in the church and maybe even, especially even people outside the church. Um, and it provides opportunity for you to share with them all the way from social groups through to Saturday groups. Actually, if we click through the, um, the slides. Yeah. Now, if, if you, who, who's got the church app on their phone? Yeah, who, who doesn't? Are you willing to admit it? <laughs> It's all right. Um, do, go, do go look it up, the Church, the church Centre app. It's really good. See, uh, this is some screenshots of my phone. Um, so if, 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 I, if I were wondering what life group I wanted to join, and we're going to talk particularly about this, this group that uh, Michael leads, I would click on the uh, Church Centre app, and I'll come up with this, Welcome Home, and I'll go down to the bottom left-hand corner, it says Groups. So let's click through again. Next slide, please. And there's the different kinds of groups you've got. You've got social groups, Saturday groups, kids and family, spiritual groups. Now, today we're going to click on Saturday groups. So let's go through again. And you'll see a list of, of groups which meet here and here on, on Saturday mornings. And this particular group we're going to look at is a red group. So let's click on the bottom one. And if you have your app in your phone, this is what you'll see. Red group. This is a weekly conversational Bible study. Almost that controversial. Oh, really? This is a weekly conversational Bible study through the Sabbath School Quarterly. Make sure to come by and have an invigorating, controversial, I mean, sorry, invigorating discussion, sure to deepen your own faith in Jesus. So, hi, Michael. G'day, Matt. How are you doing? Let's give him a clap, shall we? <laughs> now, I've got, a, I've got an obvious question. Why Red Group? What's that about? Ah, uh, yes. The name Red Group. Well, let's get this straight. It doesn't mean retired and extremely dangerous. Although there are, some members makes you of, there are some members of the group who probably qualify for that, not mentioning any names. John? Jo John O'Malley here? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it, it goes back, I think, when um, I think Judy Weismar was the um, Sabbath School director at that particular time. Is this time. an easy explanation? This is the shortened version. 
Um, and she just wanted something to identify the, the Sabbath school group, so she said, pick a colour. So we picked red. Okay. I'm colourblind, so it doesn't work for me. That's all right. <laughs> um, where and when do you guys meet? Well, because we're a Sabbath school group, we meet on Saturday morning. We meet in the corner over here at 9.15. We go from 9.15 to, t- to 10.30. So that's the where and the when. So they set up at 9.15 and they start talking. Well, you probably talked before, but they start officially talking at 9.30. That's right. That's cool. Um, so what, for, for those people here wondering about live groups and which group they want to join, and there's a lot of choices out there, they're probably listening to you thinking, I wonder what this group is about. Can you tell me what the nature of your group is? What do you do and how do you do it? Yeah, well, because we're a Sabbath school group, our focus is Bible study and spiritual growth. Um, and that's what, that's what all of our, our Sabbath school groups would be doing, I would imagine. Um, you know, reading the Bible, I think, is a great thing. And if you're doing that, I encourage you to keep doing it. But if you want to shift up to the next level, Sabbath school is the place to be because it's basically the interactive, in-depth study of, of God's Word. So I think it's important that we move from just reading the Bible, which is good, but, but going to, to studying the Bible. So that's what we do. How do we do it? Well, the Seventh-day Adventist Church brings out a quarterly, um, which, which helps us with that. And, and each quarter has a focus, and I think that's important as well, to read the Bible with a focus. Um, so this, this particular quarter we're studying at the moment is on the book of Genesis. Uh, in that book, there's 13 lessons for 13 weeks. And if you do the maths, that's one lesson per week. Um, so the idea is that you read the lesson to yourself at home and study at home and the best part is when you come to Sabbath school on Saturday morning and you discuss it with your friends and discover things that you might not have thought of and just share ideas from that particular lesson. I was talking to Karen this morning and we're just saying how great it is to be able to share different things we discover about God during the week and it's a great opportunity to do that at Sabbath school on Saturday morning. Thanks, Michael. Um, now, you've been the group coordinator. This is the last question. You've been the group coordinator since you well, moved into this building, which is quite a while. Um, if I were a person who were thinking, again, about joining a group, whether it's a Saturday group or any kind of group, um, and I was thinking about maybe your, the group you're involved with, what would you say is the reason that you are involved with it? What, what, what drives you about being part of this group? Well, you know, I, I look forward to Sabbath school every single um, Saturday. Matter of fact, you know, I've got number 94 on my book here. I number each book that we get. So if you divide 94 by 4, you get about 24. So I've been in Sabbath school for 24 years, studying um, each of the, the books that come out. And it's an it's amazing thing to do. Um, so if you're into raising the level of your, of your relationship with Jesus, if you're into in-depth interactive study if you're into having a good old laugh i think red group is the group for you a bit of an advertisement there that's good thanks let's give one more clap thanks michael thanks matt so we're going to we're going to we're going to do this similar kind of thing over the next well however however long it takes to get through all the groups effectively so we're going to look at other groups and we're going to look at talk to their, their leaders and also give you a bit of insights on what their involvement is so i hope you enjoy that thank you Hello, hello. Oh, there. Good morning, everyone. Where's all my fun people of the church, the littlies? It's your time to come and hang out with me for a few minutes. Come on up the front. Let's go. Where is everyone? Come and hang out with Farmer Chanel. All righty. Are we missing anyone? Is anyone being a bit shy out there? Come on up. You're not too old, not too young. Everyone's welcome. Okay. How is everyone today? Are we good? Excellent. I'm going to tell you a really fun story today about a little girl named Chanel. Can anyone imagine, can think, based on what I'm wearing, what it could be about? 
Is it about a circus ballerina? Is it about a... Yes, darling. A farmer, that is right. So let's get started with our story. Now, before I get started, this is our train. So I need everyone to hop on board the train. Quick, let's get on. Hop on board the two-two train because we are off together to the farm. So come and grab a seat if you can't. Yes, good. So now let me tell you, Chanel came home from school and she sa- and her mum said, Chanel, there's something on your bed for you. And she went to her bedroom and she found, what did she find? Well, it is a note, but it's a special note and it's called a letter. And so she quickly opened it up and she had a read of it. Dear Chanel, I know it's, you know it's my birthday this coming weekend. You would make my birthday the best birthday present ever if you came and spent some quality time with me at the farm. Love, Nana and Grandpa. (gasps) Mum, can I go get dressed now and can I go now? Chanel, it's not Friday yet. In two more sleeps you get to go and you can spend the weekend with your nana and grandpa. Chanel went straight away. She was so excited and put her farm clothes on. She slept with her farm clothes that night. And the next morning she went to school. As soon as she got home, she put her farm clothes back on because she was so excited. So the morning came of Friday and she said, Mum, this is my day. I'm going to go spend some time with nana and grandpa. I know, Chanel, and after school, we're going to get on the train, but we've decided you're going to go by yourself. So, the afternoon came, Chanel ran in, got her bags, put her farm clothes on, and off she went on the train. So, together, let's get this train moving, okay? So, start with me, this side here, let's get those, ooh, woohoo, what do we need for a train to know that it's moving? Wheels, perfect, we need the wheels, and what else do we need, the... Toot, toot. Yes, and off it went. So off we went, every two, ever, all together, let's go. Oh, yeah. oh, goodness, it's a slow train, is it? Or was it a fast one? Let's try that again. Oh, good, and the train, and off they went to the farm. Oh, excellent. As Chanel got closer to the farm, she started to peer out of the windows and started to see all the farm animals. What sort of animals do you think she saw? Piggies. Piggies, good girl, Yes. Goats, cows, yes, horses, dogs, all of those great things she saw. And what sort of animal are you? What sort of animal would you like to be? Do you want to pretend you're an animal? Mm. Which one? A chicken and there was going to be a chicken at the farm. Okay, so Chanel got off the train and her nana and grandpa were there with a big hug, ready to give her a big hug and said to her, Chanel, all the animals need to be fed. We've waited for you. She went with her bucket. She was so excited and she went with her bucket with all her food for the animals. I'd like to have a little try of some of the animal food this morning. I've got some potato skin, some pumpkin. Who would like to try? You want to try this? You don't. I've got a surprise for you at the end of the story. For those listening well, we'll get to try something else. So Chanel really quickly went and started to feed all the animals. She went into the chickens. Thank you, darling. And guess what she found? She found how many eggs? She found four eggs for Nana and Grandpa. She found this one too. That was a special golden one, which I'm going to give to someone who's listening. Oh, let me see. Oh, good. Okay, so the dog followed her down and he was looking at all the fun things that she was doing. She was milking the cows. Do we know how to milk the cows? (laughs) Now, was it like that? anyone know how to milk a cow? Sweetheart, can you stand up here and show us how you milk a cow properly? Oh, these city girls, let's have a look. Oh, beautiful, that's how you milk a cow. And Grandpa was with her and the whole time Chanel was following her grandpa around and they were having the best quality time together. Oh, it was just beautiful. Now Grandpa said, Chanel, It's getting pretty late and I think it's time we have our dinner. And Chanel said, okay, Grandpa. And 
He said, now I know your favourite dinner isn't something too big. I'm going to give you some wheat bix tonight. And she thought, oh, that sounds good. Thank you, Grandpa. And so she got herself some wheat bix She got herself some wheat bix And she went and sat outside on the front veranda. Now, she was sitting there eating her wheat bix one by one, when suddenly a little friend turned up next to her. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Now, Chanel was about 10 years old. Is there anyone here that's about 10? Oh, you are, sweetheart. You're nearly 10. Excellent. So, Chanel was about 10 years old. So, she saw this snake. Now, I don't know about you. If I saw a snake like this, I would be running the other way. I would be so scared of a snake that big. But do you know what Chanel did? She decided, you look a bit hungry, Mr. Snake. I'm going to give you some of my dinner. Oh, so she got her so good, opened it up, put um, some in. Now, Nana and Grandpa were still inside. They were getting their dinners ready. So Chanel started to feed the snake. One for you, one for me. And then the snake all of a sudden put his head up and Chanel thought, you greedy thing. Don't you dare be greedy. And she would pop the snake on the head. She tried it again. One for me, one for you. And this snake kept going up and up and up with his head. And she thought, you cheeky, cheeky snake. Don't you dare be greedy. So she kept bopping this head with her spoon. One for me, one for you. Don't be greedy. And every time she would bop him on the head, his head would get taller and taller and taller. What do you think was starting to happen? Was he being greedy? Was he being greedy? He was being greedy, but he was actually starting to get a bit mad because he didn't like to be bopped on the head with a hard spoon. One for you, one for me. Don't be greedy now. One for you, one for me. And this snake was getting more and more upset. Now, Nana and Grandpa walked on out from the kitchen and they came out to see Chanel. And when they saw what was in front of Chanel... Grandpa and Nana both went, look at what she's got in front of her. And Grandpa just stopped and said to Nana, stop, don't move. And so Chanel kept going, one for you, one for me, don't you be greedy now. And Grandpa was there going, oh my goodness. Grandpa ran in as quickly as he could to the house and he came running back out, one for you, one for me, bang! Oh, the snake fell down onto the ground. And Chanel goes, Grandpa, what have you done to my snake? And Grandpa said, Chanel, that is the one of the most dangerous snakes that you could be feeding. And Chanel said, but Grandpa, in worship this morning at home, Mum was saying about quality time with people and I was just trying to have some quality time with my friend. Oh, Grandpa said, Chanel, you coming to the farm and having quality time with me has been the best present in the world. You have to be so careful who you have quality time with. Oh, I'm exhausted. Okay, so who can tell me last week what our story was about? Last week, the story was about what? Words of affirmation, which is part of what? Good job. The five love languages. Can anyone guess what today's story is about? Which love language? Quality time. Excellent. Thank you for listening to my story. Now, before you go... I've got a little Easter present for all of you for listening to my story 
and having quality time with me. Now, your little present is somewhere up on stage, but don't you move. Let me tell you something. If you pull the drums over, if you pull the microphone over, I won't be allowed to do another children's story again, okay? So when you go up there, be so careful. Just tiptoe. Everyone's allowed one little present for coming and having some quality time with me today. One little bag each. And that's sugar-free Cadbury chocolate mum and dad's and sugar-free biscuits. Please don't eat it in church. Wait till after the church so you can get a little bit hypo outside, everyone. Just one, one little, one, one bag each. Good job. Did everyone, did you get one, sweetheart? You come here. Oh, you found her one? Come and have a look here. Did you hear? All righty. Oh, you found three. Good job. Did everyone, did you find one, sweetheart? Okay, quick, let's just. Okay. Have a look down here on the stairs, sweetie. They're all. All right. If you missed out, straight after church, I'm going to help you now. Sorry, kids. We've got some colouring in as well if you'd like to do that. So come and grab one of these if you'd like to do some colouring in. So if you missed out on your little present, come and see me after church and I'll find you something. We invite you to take an appropriate position for prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for church and that we are able to come to church and we have the freedom in this country to worship. And we thank you for worship and what it means to us. We pray for Lockie who has COVID and we pray that you'll be with him and help him to to heal. We pray that you'll bless Murray, who's taken his position today. Bless him as he speaks to us about time. Time is so important. With all the gifts that God has given to us, time is something that God is going to really look at us and look at what we do with time. We pray that um, it will help us today, that we might use our time wisely and well. We thank you for the Sabbath. And we thank you that we're able to worship and come to Sabbath school too and worship the Creator and to um, worship this week about um, the creation and the book of Genesis. We pray that you bless uh, us as we give our, our offering. We thank you that you've given to us the ability to give. You could have... Um, finance the church in other ways but you've made it possible for us to give to find to finance our church in the, the blessedness of giving and we pray that you'll bless us today as we give our offerings which is to go towards um, our local church expenses and we pray that you'll take us now for Jesus sake amen it's time now for our offering And we pray that uh, the deacons, as they come, that you might give and give wisely and well.
What is quality time? Quality time means giving someone your undivided attention. It's spending intentional time with them to show them that you genuinely care for them. This can come about in two different ways, quality conversation and quality activities. Mm -hmm. And quality conversation is when you just spend time listening to somebody, their thoughts, their feelings, their emotions, desires, and in return, you just share your heart back with them as well. Quality activities, on the other hand, is more about doing things together. And it doesn't matter really what you're doing. Uh, it's more about investing time into something that the other person just has a genuine interest in. So what stresses them out? When quality time people don't feel listened to or understood, their anxiety begins to rise. When they feel that your attention may be divided or that you might be bored with them, it sends them the message that they're not really worth your time. Mm. So how do we love these people really well? Solid conversations and intentional time together can help to reduce anxiety and increase connection. Take the time to listen and understand someone so that they can feel truly known and cared for. When you begin to show that you have a genuine interest in somebody and spending time with them, you will begin to see their best traits come out in abundance. So how do you think that went? Pretty good. Yeah? Tell me about it. Thoughts, feelings, Ooh. desires. Oh. Do you have time? Quality time. When we're spending quality time with people, we want to make sure that they are the sole focus of what um, we're doing with them. We don't want to be sort of distracted by whatever is happening over here or whatever someone else is doing over there. It's actually being really focused and intentional. And this morning, I just want to sing Jesus at the Centre, where we make Jesus the Centre, our sole focus of our quality time with him. Why don't you stand with us as we sing this song this morning? center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all, Jesus at the center of it all, from beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus.
thank you for being in this place this morning. I pray that you are just the centre of our world today. I pray that you become the centre of each of our lives and the centre of our church this morning. I pray that you help us to open our minds to what you're trying to say to us. Help us listen to what you're trying to tell us. In your precious name, amen. Hello, hello, good morning everyone. Uh, Good news, I'm like the substitute teacher this morning, Uh, so that immediately lowers everyone's expectations of me, which is very, very good, I'm very glad to hear about that. Um, Lockie was due to preach um, today, and um, I'm glad I can um, be here in in his place, Uh, you will probably not feel the same, but I am... Uh, Someone's better than nothing, right? Um, The old substitute teacher. Everyone loved him. Um, So it's really good to be here talking about and continuing our theme of love languages. Um, I don't know about you, I've really tried to embrace it. And um, as as we've been talking through them, my mind just immediately kicks into anyone that I interact with. I'm just like, I just want to put them in a category because I love to categorize people and And um, as opposed to thinking them as a human, they're just a love language now. So um, I really have enjoyed all of those interactions and and looking at how I can then do the opposite and really frustrate them. So it's been a good exercise um, in that sense. Uh, It's also very practical. Uh, It's Jasper's birthday today. Happy birthday, Jasper. And very practical in the sense that uh, we've, we did the quiz, actually. Jasper, what was your love language? No, it wasn't. It was words of affirmation. Um, <laughs> you fool. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> kids. And it's his birthday today, so what was really good is I was able just um, not to give him any gifts, and we just wrote a card with some really kind words uh, and like a Bible promise <laughs> and how we love him. And he just thought that was so awesome that he wept. He just cried (laughs) when I told him. And and there was nothing else for him. He just wept, the dear child. So the love languages can be really practical as well because you just get to tap into those that are nearest and dearest and it can save you some money along the way as well. (laughs) Good. So the premise of the Five Love Languages book is quite simple. And if you've been here Um, over the last few weeks, um, hopefully you've got um, the key message. But if you haven't, the premise is quite simple, that different people with different personalities give and receive love in different ways. Um, And it makes, uh, hopefully you all reflect, um, not only on yourself, but more importantly, probably those that are around you. So first of all, Mike... um, over in the States at the moment, um, looks like he's having a great time too, Cara, I must admit, a lot of uh, jealousy. Um, he kicked it off talking about acts of service and, and as, as a love language and how doing acts of service um, for people where that's their love language is so meaningful for them. Uh, Matt, thankfully, took physical touch. I, d- I just would have been too inappropriate with that one. So I'm glad he, he handled that one and, and did it really well. But talking about how... Um, You know, saying something and then having that touch and contact, the the higher level of that then takes that love language, the meaningfulness to that person, um, how it just elevates whatever else else it is that you're doing. And then last week, um, Karen, um, which I got to to listen to while I was driving um, to and from work, uh, because I wasn't able to be here for it last week, with words of affirmation, I thought you did a great job. So... Um, uh, I was obliged to say that. 
um, because I knew it would have really hurt you if I, if I didn't. So, um, <laughs> um, but no, it was really, really, it was good. And I think what I've really enjoyed about all of the messages is there is a surface level message in all of them, which is really quite simple and straightforward. Understand someone's love language. And if you do that, you can be a better uh, father, son, uh, whatever it is um, to, towards them. But in all of them, there is then a level of deeper because if it was that simple, we wouldn't need this time to look at it. We wouldn't need books written about it if it was just that simple. So today we are looking at quality time. If you've done the quiz, who are the quality time people here? Okay. Okay, take a look around. They're the needy ones. Okay. <laughs> So, there they are, guys. Put it under the banner of quality time. Now, I can make fun of them because um, that's not me. Um, And what has been really good over the last three weeks is the speaker, the speaker's love language has been what they've talked on, but I am the substitute speaker. And quality time is not my love language, so I get to say whatever I like. And it's interesting when you think about, uh, when you have insight into your own love language, um, I don't do this, other people may, but you start judging people where, where theirs is different. And I just gave you a classic example. And that's, what, and that's what people say, you know, people who really respond to quality time and love quality time, if that's not you, how, how easy is it just to say like, oh my gosh, they're so needy, right? I asked one question. And it's like I went into a time warp, and an hour and a half later I came out, and I don't even think I got my question answered. And, and this, has happened to me at, this has happened to me at work, um, uh, around, you know, clearly a, a senior manager I used to work with um, loved quality time. And so I had, to, I had to set up the whole thing beforehand, um, it, like one of the priests going into the holies of holies, you know, get the, the rope around in case you just never come out, just yank him out. So I used to say to one of our other staff members, I said, oh, look, I'm going in. And they knew what that meant, I'm going in. And in 10 minutes, if I'm not out, I need a phone call to say, there's something urgent that I need to do. Because we knew, everyone knew they were quality time people. They definitely weren't words of affirmation because you never got to say anything. You were just listening to this person and it just went on and on and on. So I just needed the phone call for the out. But it's easy to mock the ones that you're not and poke holes in the ones that you're not. The words of affirmation, again, really simple. They're just wordy. You know, like, do something meaningful. The acts of service guys are just saying, do something. Don't talk to me about it. Just do something. Show me. Show me the love. Don't tell me. Show me. Because it's not your natural love language. Similarly, if acts of service isn't your love language, it's like, use your brain. Like, don't just run in and do something. Like, can you think about it? Do we want to make a plan about this? Do we want to actually talk this through and come up with something that's actually going to work? Or, no, let's just do something like a Neanderthal. Come on. Like, because when it's not your love language, it is just easy to pull holes in it because your reference point is you. So really what we should be saying is there are two love languages. There's yours, which is clearly really important, and then there's everyone else's, which is the love language of being annoying. Because everyone should just be like us. And wouldn't the world be better and simpler? Amen? Okay. But we do do that. And in all seriousness, I have, throughout the last couple of weeks, as I interact with people, tried to actually gain a deeper insight into them. So I can be a better manager or a better friend, uh, a better father, Um, as a relationship, and that is the whole point of this series. The point isn't about you uh, preaching to other people about how to love you better. I mean, that's part of it, but really it's about how can I be a better son, father, friend, colleague in in my life? And if we can understand that, um, uh, I think we have a richer life for it because we are not only, we're elevating other people. And when we elevate other people, our relationships become elevated. And, and because, you know, we are so connected in life, if we have rich, elevated relationships, life is better. Um, rather than the shallow surface level, uh, assuming everyone is just the same as me. 
So understanding this really is the key for how, not for other people to be better towards you, but how can I be better towards those around me? And this week we are talking about quality time. They're not needy people. Some of them are. Um, And it's interesting that we talk about this because um, quality time has, I think, really been reframed over the last couple of years because we haven't been able to spend time with people like we normally would, right? Um, For a lot of us who've been in lockdowns and in and out of lockdowns and depending where you're from and depending where you're watching from, um, you've potentially not had traditional quality time a lot over the last couple of years. Uh, And that's why the share price for Zoom, which started about $88 in February 2020, went up to nearly $600 about eight months later. (laughs) Missed it by that much. Because we haven't had that proximity and we've needed to use other technologies in order to have, uh, one, just time with people that we can see, um, but and other people have actually managed to have that quality time over that medium. Uh, There is then the other extreme... Um, during COVID, which is we've had just too much time. And if you've been in isolation, um, uh, there is such thing as too much quality time. Uh, I think even if it was your language, when you can't leave your house, uh, and I have a friend in isolation at the moment, and he's like, I was so disappointed because the mailman didn't come today. Um, I didn't see him out the window. And so his life just felt empty because that was was kind of what he was was watching for. But we've got this isolation, um, and, and particularly... Um, where if you were in a household and, and you may have got COVID uh, or you may not have, but others did, and so you're isolating and then, you know, day six, you're about to, to run free and then you test positive on day six and seven and it starts again and it's just two weeks of fun with family and friends, isn't it? So quality time really needs to be, uh, I think, defined a little bit more. So... One of the, uh, I suppose, key aspects there and one of the traps to fall into when we talk about quality time is that we just think about it as time Uh, and an an amount of time. So sometimes we equate quality time with, well, if I'm spending a long period of time with someone, therefore I'm spending, that's quality time. When we know that that is absolutely not the case, and one of the frustrations for people where quality time is their love language is it's nothing about the amount of time we're spending together. It is about what we're doing in the time we are spending together. It is about the quality. So while it may not be my first love language it's actually been a really great exercise for me to be able to understand the person where it is, their love language. So the key point is this, though, and I'll I'll come back to it a few times, because we can fall into the trap of relationships being about us, and if only the other person in our relationship, no matter who it is, would do this or do that or be this person for me or be there for me or not be there for me, we get drawn into this culture that um, the relationship is about others and what they can bring for me as opposed to the, the richness we can bring to other people, which then comes back on to us. And that is, and that is just love wrapped up right there. And talking about the love language is, is, is just talking about God, right? Of God who is love, defined by service and servanthood, uh, His physical presence, His Holy Spirit that indwells within us. His words and promises that affirm us like no other and give us hope. And today around quality time. And God knew what he was doing when he created Sabbath. Even before things went wrong, he said, guys, we need this time. And I'm putting it in right at the beginning. Before anything else happens, this is important. Quality time is absolutely another thing important to God. Like I said, it's not my first love language. And I've reflected on how in the past I've been caught out on that fact, talking to people where it is. And because I will never admit that I'm wrong, or I will never admit that I'm not listening to someone... I have developed these concepts, and you might want to write these down. 
where I try to bluff my way through um, and try and get myself back into conversations. Because one of my challenges is when I'm talking to someone, my, my mind starts racing ahead or it starts going to back what I, what I was doing, what I'm doing next, or the person starts to talk something, I'll take in about 30 seconds of what that was and then I'm, and I'm running with that and, and they're still talking. Um, and I only realise um, later that I've stopped listening. Um, and so what I will do is, um, rather than say, sorry, I'm an idiot, can you just back up and talk me through that again? I've devised some ways, and you might want to write these down. The first one is this. What I'll say is, and I realise I'm not listening, and it's, you know, it's two minutes later, I'll say, just wait, 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 wait. And I'll say it like it's quite important. I'll interject and say, hang on. Can you just take me back and walk me through step by step what you were just saying again? Because that affirms them, um, and they think it's really important. And, and so I've, I've, and I'm just like, I'm really interested, and I want you just to take me back and walk me through it just a little slowly now, um, because I can tell what you were saying was really important. So, so that's one technique you can use, um, or you can ask them to repeat themselves. Because you say, hang on, I, I can tell that's important, I think. Can you just walk me through that one one last time? Because I want to make sure I'm going I'm to write it down this time. Just make sure you can do that. Or my personal favourite is, look, what I need you to do, because there was a lot of good information there, just send me an email with the key points, um, because I am going to get right onto that. I am going to get right onto that. And if I've ever done it to you, I apologise. Um, but there's some, there's some ideas for you. Because it's not my love language, and, um, and, I, and I think I don't want to hurt someone, and so I just play these ridiculous games... Um, with myself. The issue comes when what they were saying is absolutely not important. So just hang on, hang on, back. Just explain, walk me through that one again, what you just said. You're going to buy a Mars bar. Okay. I'm glad you repeated that. You do that. That's excellent work. Okay. <laughs> um, so the point is this, though. It's not the time it's the quality that counts. And so I want to talk about three quality time killers. Um, and that wa this was by far the easiest exercise for me because it's not my natural love language. So it's like, what are the things that I just do um, in this space? This is the first one. Uh, quality time killers, number one. Busyness and distraction. I put it as number one because I think in today's society and culture, that is by far and away the biggest quality time killer. Not just in terms of the amount of time, being busy and distracted, but even when we've got um, time, I'm terrible to be on my phone when other people are, are talking. Um, which, you know, isn't a massive deal to me, but is a massive deal to probably the most rest of the population, to be honest. So busyness and distraction is a quality time killer. Um, Martha in the Bible always gets labelled with, with this. I think it's really harsh. Um, but Luke 10, uh, 38, um, and the words used um, says, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. This is when Jesus was in her house. Martha, Martha went out to do it. Um, if, if there, I'm sure... If Martha were here, she would say, I'm just doing my act of service um, for Jesus. But um, she misses the moment, and that was the point. She misses, she misses the moment. So while it may be a little bit harsh, for a lot of people we have great intentions, but we get distracted. I, I can literally meet with someone and know I need to go and do something, and I go back to my desk and there's you know, 25 emails and I'm, I'm there and I'm distracted. Um, or I walk away and something else grabs me um, and I'm distracted. Quality time killer, busyness and distraction. Number two, awareness. Um, this is um, a good one. So Philip um, is a good example of this. This is in John 14, and I'll read um, this one. John 14, uh, verses 8 to 11. Um, so this is Philip talking to Jesus. He says, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, he's shaking his head. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. 
So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just because that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work that you have seen me do. You can hear the frustration there um, from Jesus, can't you? Because there's just a lack of awareness of what's been going on, you know. Uh, Examples of where the disciples are saying, okay, so, so what are you up to? And Jesus is just like, oh. Or when, when's your kingdom going to come and we're going to overthrow the Romans and, and just get on with it and just go, oh, do you, are, you, are you just not listening, guys? There's something, the Sermon on the Mount. Are you hearing what's going on? There's just a lack of awareness about what is happening around you. Um, others may say... Um, that you're just not um, present. It was like Jacob after he wrestled in his dream with, with God and he says, surely, surely you were here, God, but I did not know. And all of a sudden that awareness came because, again, it's not about time. We just, it's, we, we, it, it's, they're there, they're right here. God is here. Wherever you are, God is. But sometimes we just lack the awareness to do it. And we'll say, well, you know, when I get home tonight and I'm going to study or when I get to Sabbath and then I'm going to, I'm going to recommit my relationship with God. But we just lack the awareness to go, I just need to talk to God wherever I am right now. And surely I know that God is here wherever I am. But he just lacked the awareness. Many of us go about our lives and just aren't aware that God is right there next to us. And we say we feel distant and he's saying, I'm right here. Talk to me about it. Uh, The last one is another favourite. Favourite story. Uh, Quality time killer is complacency. Um, The parable of... The prodigal son. Or as some call it, the parable of the two lost sons, which is what the story is really about. Right? There's two sons. The Bible's very clear on that. And the elder son, who was with the father the whole time, clearly never knew his father. So you can have close proximity to someone but never actually know them or not be engaged in a meaningful relationship with them. Uh, That story is found in Luke 15. And he says, the elder brother says, this is his complaint, all these years I have slaved for you because he is so frustrated about the love he has for his, his other son, and he's just like, this is unfair. All these years I've been here. I've been here. He's not been here. But all that he shows in that moment is that he never knew his father. He never knew the great love that his father had for him and his father had for his youngest lost son. So just because you stay close doesn't mean... It's quality time. Just because you have close proximity to someone in your life doesn't mean there is any quality time. It would have been the key message, that elder son to the Pharisees, wouldn't it? You know about him, but you don't know him. And I know I've fallen into that trap many times. I love reading about God, uh, and yet my actual communication with God is severely lacking. So my knowledge is increasing, but my relationship is decreasing. And that's called complacency, because you think just because I've had this relationship before, relationships take work, right? They're an ongoing thing. If they're going to be ongoing and meaningful, they need ongoing 
work, time, and attention to keep them that way. And so when we come to God, we talk about, and we've been so privileged to have some awesome baptisms over this year already, right? Um, and if that, was, if that was the end of the road, how disappointing would that be? It's just like, we've reached the high point. But actually, no, this, this is just the new beginning for you. But it's easy to become complacent in the knowledge of what's gone before. Uh, and if you were probably to choose one thing the Israelites were guilty of, it was they, they hung their hat on what happened years ago. Well, God did, you know, God did this, he did this, you know, he was amazing at that, remember when he did this, um, but if it doesn't mean anything today, it's meaningless. So we can be around God but not know him. We can sit in his house, we can sit in his church and feel so distant from God and I can guarantee there will be people here today where that is, that is absolutely the core of their heart, that they are sitting here and they've never felt more distant from God. Or they're sitting next to a loved one, a son, uh, a spouse, a friend, and yet they can sit there and go, I've never felt more distant from this person in so long. Because proximity doesn't mean it's meaningful. Being in God's church doesn't mean God is moving in your life. doesn't mean the relationship is flourishing. So we can live in the same house, the same church, with family, with God, and we can still feel utterly distant. So what is the impact when we don't understand um, this about someone um, when quality time is their number one love language? Uh, what I've discovered is clearly this, and they said it really well on that, on that earlier video. So where we don't understand this, where people whose love language is quality time and they are not getting that from us, whoever that is, is firstly, they don't feel valued or validated. But it's very easy for them to start to believe they, they are just viewed as a commodity of what they can do for us, whether that's a workplace or in home, you know, you're just a number. You're just something that does a function as opposed to someone um, you're in relationship with. So where you don't give quality time for people where that is their love language, they can just, they can be, feel like they've been just viewed as a commodity. Feel like that, they're just a means to an end. Or just taken for granted. Because here they are needing this in their life to feel loved and they're not getting it, and so they just feel taken for granted. And we think the answer is easy. You know, how hard is it just to stop and hear me and be present for a moment? But like I said, if it was that easy, we wouldn't need this series, we wouldn't need books. It's hard because we're creatures of habit, it's hard because we have our own way of being, and that's normal for us. And moving outside of that is really challenging because it requires effort. So, what can I do then? So, we've talked about what the killers are. What can I do? Well, it's the opposite, isn't it? So, rather than being busy and distracted, it's being present when you're with someone. Put the phone away. That's never been said to me before. <laughs> Put the phone away. Look at someone in the eye. Active listening. Literally the opposite of what I was describing before when I was just trying to bluff my way through conversation. Actually paying attention to what's being said and engaging in that. So the answer to busyness and distraction is just being present, putting the distractions away, leaving them behind. It's not, like I said, it's not easy. We're creatures of habit. It might not be a big issue for us, but it is going to be a massive issue for other people. Um, being aware, having awareness... Um, when it comes to God and our relationship with God, having the awareness that wherever you are, God is. Whether you're in the car, whether you're doing a morning walk, whether you are making dinner, there is no boundary anymore. God is. God is there. We need an awareness of that. 
And when it comes to your loved ones and relationships too, it's remembering that proximity doesn't mean presence. Sitting next to someone on a couch with me, but again, we're all looking at our phones or we're watching something, we're not actually engaged in anything meaningful. So that awareness is key. And finally, to combat complacency, you've got to remember that relationships are an ongoing concern. They're an ongoing work that is required. Having an amazing established relationship with anyone and then just thinking that that will see you through the next 50 years with them in a meaningful relationship is ridiculous. The only answer to complacency is acknowledging that it takes work and there is reward in that because our relationships become richer. So that might mean setting aside time. Um, I struggle with that and the discipline of that. The answer answer for me personally has been reminding myself that wherever I am, I can be present for someone. I can call them on the phone if it's a friend. I know I can can reach out to my mum any time. I can, if I'm with God, I can engage with him wherever I am. I don't have to have a set time. That discipline um, really works for people. Uh, But it doesn't have to be that way because we just need an awareness that God is with us wherever we are. And finally this, when we're talking about love in general, quality time potentially in particular, there is always a cost to it. With anything meaningful, there is always a cost, right? Because if I'm spending quality time with someone, it means I could be doing something else, right? It was probably a whole semester of economics right there. It's called opportunity cost, you know? It's the same with our building, our new building. We're doing a new building, uh, amen, which I think is awesome. But there's also the realisation, well, we could be doing other things as well. And so is this this worth it? Is this the right direction? And as a church, um, I think it's fantastic that we've agreed that it is the right direction. But there is always an opportunity cost. And so when you're investing in people, yeah, you could be doing something else. You could be doing your own work. You could be uh, setting aside your own plans and visions for your own life. could be playing video games. Because there is always a cost to anything meaningful. And if you look at Scripture, the whole Bible can be very, very easily seen as an exercise where God is desperate to be in relationship with us. Desperate to spend time with us. Not just close in proximity, but in relationship with us. One of the most fascinating things about creation is the fact that God chose to partner with us. He designed it that way. He said, I could create all this. I could manage it. I would rather do it with you. And um, we did that really well, didn't we, for about five seconds. And then it all went pear-shaped. And yet he was so committed to partnering with us, he went to these lengths so that he could still be present with us. Even though our sin and whatever else kept, kept him away, he said, that's all right, I'll find another way. I'll bridge the distance that you've created. Uh, so that he created the tabernacle, gave instructions for how to build the tabernacle, and then his, he, he resided there. Uh, there was the temple, uh, and then once that was complete, God resided there so he could dwell with his people. So he could be with them, not a distant God in there and amongst it. And when we made mistake after mistake, uh, God just filled the void. He bridged the distance each and every time. So we had the temple, and then when that was destroyed and that didn't work, Jesus Christ came himself to fill the void. Emmanuel, literally, God with us, because he wanted to dwell with his people. He wanted to reside with us, be among us. And then the funny thing is, even after that was, uh, after his death and resurrection, he said, do you know what? It's actually good that I'm going. It is actually good that I'm going. 
because guess where I'm going to reside then? Because you are actually now the temple. And I have made you clean, and so therefore I can reside in you and among you. These are the lengths he went to for his presence with us, to have quality time with us. And so this is the challenge, church. This is the challenge. There is a cost to loving, genuine, meaningful relationships. If that is something that we want in our lives, if that is something we put on our New Year's resolution list, we need to understand that it comes with a cost. It literally cost Jesus his life to fill that void, to bridge that gap, to ensure that relationship could be had without any barrier. It literally cost him his life. And so the challenge, church, that I want to leave you is this. For all of the relationships in your life, if you want them to be meaningful, understand that it requires a cost. Think about what you are willing to give up to make it more meaningful. Understand those people around you and their love language. Not because it's a fun quiz, but because your relationships will be enriched by it. And so as I invite the worship team to come up, um, it is my prayer that uh, we can rise to that challenge, we can accept that cost, we can be grateful for the cost that Jesus has paid for us, and then we can live it out ourselves in the relationships around us also. I am one of those quality time needy people. I'll admit it. Um, But yeah, this song is actually all about, Lord, I need you. It's about spending time with him. And I know some of you are probably looking at your watch going, hang on. Come on, we're finished now. But I want to give you this last few minutes where you can actually really just go, you know what? I'm just going to be in the moment. Just going to be in the moment. I'm going to ask him, I'm going to say, Lord, I need you for whatever it is, whether it's finances, relationships, friendships, whatever, whatever you need him for, I want you to be in the moment, not distracted, not looking at your phone, not looking at the people around you, actually just being really in the moment with God. Why don't you stand with us as we praise and worship him? Lord, I need you.
worshipping with us today at Gold Coast Central. Now, for those who would like um, someone to pray with you, down here on your left we have the prayer corner, so feel free to make your way down there. Cafe Connect apparently is this coming Friday night, and remember to see us all tonight at the ADRA concert. Have a great week. <laughs> 